Does it seem hot in here? Ugh. Loha, but it's miserable. My underarms are damp. How can I be expected to work in these conditions? Chief Tennyson is supposedly looking into the cause, but I've seen no action from her. Deplorable conduct. My superiors will be hearing about it. You can be certain of that. She's doing everything she can. It's your people's fault it's not fixed, not June Lay's. <laughs> My, aren't you... Hmm... Excitable. Don't talk to her that way. <laughs> oh, sweetie. I don't owe a grease-stained wrench jockey like her the time of day. Let alone my deference. Take it back now. I'm sorry my temper got away from me. Please accept my sincerest apologies to you and your friend. Does that work for you, Pavon? Oh, I'm not used to folks saying sorry. Um, it's... It's not all right exactly, but I appreciate the apology, I guess. Well, now that that's dealt with, was there anything else you wanted to discuss? Can you give me the stellar guy? Good law! Who'd want to go to that toxic hell pit? So... Huh? No. Emphatically no. Unequivocally no. Immutably no. No one would have done it. You didn't have to crack the one of the swords. Best to be clear, I believe. Why are her arms gone? Oh, you've noticed my friends. Wonderful. Aren't their guns very large? Tremendously impressive. They're here to keep the peace, of course. To watch your back. You know. Precisely. Groundbreaker makes much ado about its independent status and so resents any board presence, no matter how benign. You call keeping offices on their promenade benign? When the alternative is board guards at their gates? Yes, I do. They don't see it that way, of course, but I can't say I much care. A luxury stateroom, reserved for Chairman Rockwell's use. So you get to play butler to the big guy, but... To serve at our most esteemed Chairman's behest is an honor, and one I'm most thankful for. As this office is the primary embassy for the board on Groundbreaker, corporate bylaws specifically state a room must be maintained for the Chairman's exclusive use. Ask away. That should be it. Yeah. We're leaving. Wow. Okay. That was some intense. Time. Well, I'm certainly glad this is a little more manageable now. Okay. So, let's just head back. To the unreliable. Bit of a shame I can't rename the ship. Be awful nice. My dad taught me some French, you know. Stuff about omelets and uh fromage. I could take a look at that journal. By all means. I would be astounded, yet astronomically in your debt. Oh, yeah, there's nothing at all about eggs and cheese in here. <laughs> Sorry. Very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> so he is over here. Hey, you got a second? Fancy running into you again. Don't mind me. It's just admiring your ship from up close. Gotta hand it to you, boss. That's a fine-looking ship. Only thing it's missing is me. You're pretty eager to throw in with someone you barely know. Yes, I absolutely am. Just give me a shot. That's all I'm asking. I could be the best damn crew you ever hired.
temperament. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, uh, can you give me a couple of pointers? Don't beg. Tell me why I need you on my crew. You're all over the... Yeah. Hey, that's good advice. I like the way you think, boss. Besides, not like there's a line of folks standing around hoping to get on your ship. I'm persistent, I'm eager, and I'm showing initiative. What else do you want on your crew? How about an interview? Sure, an interview. That sounds fair. I mean, first time for everything, right? Ask me anything you like. Intelligence, what's the value of pie? Uh, it's delicious. <laughs> Mock apple pie and a tripacale crust? Maybe with a little cream on top? Classic. Okay. Are you any good in a fight? Are you kidding? I love a good fight. One time, I took an autoloader's head clean off its servos with one swing of a tossball stick. You can count on me in a scrap, boss. That's a promise. What's your biggest flaw? Foreman told me my biggest problem was that I didn't take orders. I told him my problem is not with authority, it's with jackasses. So yeah, I guess my biggest flaw is that I don't suffer idiots. Hope that's not a deal breaker. Hmm. He took advice really well. Having another pair of hands would be a good idea. Okay. Wow. <laughs> you don't know how long I've been waiting to hear that. Thanks, boss. You're not going to regret this. We'll see you in the ship. Be the... I'll just gather my personals and meet you on board. This is going to be great. Really? We're picking up strays now? Look at that. A real vicar. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get along like a church on fire. Okay. So... Let's get some stuff taken care of. So, you have acquired hoop. What the hell? Like, I mean, I know I had a hoop, but what's a hoop do? Provided I'm even thinking about that correctly. Okay, put all these away as well. Hey, Pavarti. You seem hey, sad. Captain. Can I get your temperature on something real quick? <laughs> Is the ship about to blow up? Sure. So, June Lei and I have been talking some. Through messages? I got him here on my data pad, and well... You don't have to prove anything She sent me a poem. Pavarti. One she wrote her own self, I'm pretty sure. Really? I don't know if I should read into it. Because poems are all symbolic and such, right? It's not so good, but real sweet. Comes from the heart, you'd say? Oh, law. That's what's got me spooked. I don't rightly know. Bavardi, it's about you get a lot of interest. Shaking itself apart. Then this lady mechanic comes by and lays one hand on it. The trouble goes away. It sings. I don't want to get too hopeful, but... I'm wondering if maybe she's the engine and I'm the lady? It's a real romantic poem. It made my chest hurt, kinda. Sounds like she likes you. I don't know where it's leading yet, or if I'm misinterpreting. I'm not much interested in physical stuff. Never have been. Leastways, not like other folks seem to be. 
It's not that I can't. I just don't care for it. It's been a problem in the past. The folk who wanted to be with me back in the Vale, they didn't... They said I was cold. You're about the warmest person I've ever met to hell with them? Yeah. Could just be nerves. Everybody's different. That sort of thing's plenty nice, but it's not everything. Yeah, number one. You're about the warmest person I've ever met to hell with them. Thanks, Captain. That makes me feel a touch better. I actually had another message from Junlei. I just couldn't work up the courage to open it. But I'm going to change that. Right now. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Let's see here. Talking about old friends. Got to thinking... Isabel? Who's... Who's Isabel? <laughs> wow, that went down a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. They were... Close, Captain. Like, more than friends close. We're close, not anymore, for some I don't know. June Lay talked about them like it was past, but how far in the past? Ten years? Last week? Captain, I'm feeling all mixed up right now. Could we maybe head to the Groundbreaker? Get some drinks at that bar there? The Lost Hope? <laughs> If that's what you want, drinks are on me. Wouldn't it be easier to talk to her about this, Isabel, first? Maybe for you. I start thinking about all the things she could say and my guts start crawling up my throat. I'm full serious. Next time we're on the Groundbreaker, I aim to get a drink. If I got to, I'll do it on my lonesome. But I'd feel better if someone I trusted was there. I'll be there. Something busted, Captain? Uh, okay. Alright, I do believe there's something to be said with with Vicar Max as well. Yeah. Hey, Please bud. Keep the kitchen area clean and sanitary. What you doing? Good to see you, boss. All right, Felix, you're looking up real nervous. You, you, like, I know you're settling in, but like, take some, drink some water or something, bud. It's okay. Groundbreaker. Didn't I tell you? I'm secretly the chairman's orphan child, abandoned at birth in the back bays. And then you were raised by a pack of sprats. That's right. Can't get anything past you, boss. <laughs> Honestly, before you picked me up, I was living in the back bays. Spent my whole life up there, watching ships roll in and take off. I always wondered when my ship would come. I was what folks on the Groundbreaker call a stowaway. Means I was invisible. Life carried on for everybody else, but not for me. I had to make my own way. At least you weren't obliged to anyone else. You were free. I have a hard time believing you were invisible to anybody. Question. You were a stowaway? That's what they called us. Orphans with no family. No company to take us in. Nowhere to go but the back bays. The words a touch kindlier than rung leech, but the meaning's just as clear. If you can't support your own self, you don't deserve to be on the Groundbreaker. That's how it is in this colony. Nobody gives a damn about you. Seems fair to me. You can't just live off other people's charity. How did you manage? Same way we all do. Look for work and hope somebody would give me a shot. Hauling boxes was about the only work I could find. Hated every second of it. The foreman and I never got on. Right, the incident with the tossball stick. Felix, you can't just attack your own foreman. Yeah? Yeah, I hear you, boss. It sounds like I was out of line, right? Swinging on my own foreman like that. But on the other hand, broadsiding the jackass with a tossball stick, that felt good. That felt real good. You want to try it. If we had a di disagreement, I expect you to be civilized. Yeah. Oh, I can do civilized. Proper civilized, too. 
genuflecting and everything. Whoa, I caught a real shit. lucky break. If you hadn't picked me up, I'd still be back at the docks, waiting for the day my ship arrives. I'm glad you're not wasting your life hauling boxes, please, Felix. If I hadn't picked you up, you'd probably be in a prison cell. You can thank me, I'd not... One. Yeah. I guess my ship did arrive in the end. I've got you to thank for that. Thanks for listening, boss. Let's get going. Okay. Vicar! Lots of purple. Vicar. As always, I am at your disposal. So, tell me what's on your mind. I excel at confessional listening. Hmm, just six. Keep worrying, I'm gonna accidentally tell one of them to get lost. I am probably going to have to start... Like, I've gotten three crew members fairly quickly. I'm fairly certain I'm going to have to start, like, prioritizing at some point and start telling some people that they aren't needed. Makes me nervous, though. Hmm. Oh, drat. Which one was mine? Oh! Don't know why I didn't notice this one before. Okay. Okay. Messages for Taylor. Blaine. Esther, this is just to let you know I've given out the rest of... Nick, heading into that community center. If you never told another soul. Okay. I can appreciate that, Esther. Junlei to Pavarti? Why am I getting one? There's this engine, see, and it hums real nice. Like a box of cats playing with mice. But she's coughing and hacking up sludge, because there's a blockage that just won't budge. What's an engine to do? Then this ranger strides in like a shark. Hair all done up and fancy and dark. She feels a spasm in her compression alternator. Trembling because it's aching to meet her. What's an engine to do? I've got oh, five more stanzas mapped out. But I'm having trouble rhyming some of the parts. I'll get back to you on that, JT. We were talking about old friends, you know? I got to think about Isabel. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what she was thinking. We were a mess, a good mess, but a mess. I'm a better me than I was then, wanted you to know. Even when I drink too much of the old family recipe. You're pretty swell. Part. Party tea? Damn you, insta spell check. Meet my French. Too tired, just gonna put my head down for. <laughs> I like Jumle all the more now. Hawthorne's sent messages to Bedford. No call for shouting. My terminal was busted. Had a few too many. Knocked it off the desk. You know how it is. Cut loose. Telling me where Wells is, so lay off. Hmm. Archived. From Bedford. Finally hear from you. Message was hilarious. To sense humor and hijinks. Escaping groundbreakers comms network. Tasty little tidbits. 
Notice you declined to dock at Edgewater's landing pad. Said it's touched down wilderness. Rugged individualist. Anyway, I hope your meeting down on Terra 2 proves fruitful. I look forward to... know where you were raised, but I'd hazard to guess it may have been a barn. Rearing would know it's unforgivably rude to ignore the ardent near. P.S. Please respond. See you in my office. Impounding mix-up. Could it have been happened a sec? Seeing you again, wingman. Udom, Udom Bedford. We met when I accidentally impounded your ship. Okay, so this guy was almost certainly, like, head over hills for Hawthorne. Sam. A clean, mean killing machine. Oh, fuck off, Hawthorne. Removal of factory standard sud steeper, acid steeper. Hmm. Okay, what's the next update? Find an acid steeper. Heard from a fellow knows the broker overcharged me for the information. Er, filch. The part was sent to an old storage facility in Roseway. Pick it up at the following pit stop, back to Emerald Vale. Wells wants me to chaperone some person of interest. Details to come later. Logs. Shrink Ray. No better. Ada, remind me weekly to check this log until I tell you to stop. Yes, I mean continually. No, Ada, not if I'm dead. Why would you even need to ask that? Back to my point. So in actuality, with my own two eyes, a sublimely powerful weapon in Wells' lab. Just sitting there for the taking. If the gray hair were to look away or forget about it, maybe. Or I just take asked a smidgen more nicely. Shrink ray. He lost so Hawthorne lost his temper. Said he was inspired to create the thing by the achievements of other scientists who dared. I heard rumors of fantastical weapons like this one, weapons that push the boundaries of mine and science's cutting edge, but I figured they were just stories, to be honest. Uh, first hand is enough to make a fellow wonder if there's more than rumors. Hammer power. Udon. Really free with the drinks, okay, fellow. Shamelessly, subtly eavesdropped two Mardets yammering on about a mad scientist some years back. Claimed he'd made a huge discovery that would change the fate of the colony. Uh, Mardet said the mad scientist kept yelling about the hammer's power or something similar. A strange weapon with power created by a crazy lab coat. So, what is the hammer in this instance? Like, guns have hammers, hammers are tools, you... It could be his way of referring to the shrink ray. Wells, just give me... Give the shrink ray to me. Blast him to the depths of the labyrinth on Tartarus and back. Record show, I did apologize for shouting him down five times, but... Architect be damned, it's just sitting there! I should have commandeered it and thanked him without asking permission or a breaking expensive equipment when he said it wasn't ready yet and that even if it were he could entrust it to someone like me. What exactly does that mean? Not trustworthy enough? Wipe out the good, hard-working folks in the colony like some sort of moral psycho? I'll admit to maintaining some questionable associations, but I follow a strict code, me, myself, and mine. Who's not to respect him? What's not to ex what's not to respect in that exactly? Now I have to wait until Wells forgets or thinks he's misplaced it. In the meanwhile, I have been tracking down additional rumors pertaining to others of these science weapons throughout Halcyon. So science Okay, so science weapons are indeed special individual weapons. 
Um, interesting. well when the ground is far beneath you. Phobic. Dexterity. Perception. Temperament. One perk point. I'm going to reject this one. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? Can we do the thing? Picked up a distress call. Can you play yes, it back? Yes, Captain. Beginning playback now. There's... There's viscera and death everywhere. Gunfire, gnashing teeth. The unemployed. For law's sake, if anyone's receiving this, please send help. What? Uh, no! No, no, no! Captain. We are now capable of accessing the Roseway landing pad. Thank you. Also, corporate protocol requires that all distress signals include a list of key personnel for retrieval. The embedded names are Anton Crane, Von Cortez, and Orson Shaw. Continue conversation. Forgive me, Captain. I would rather not discuss Alex Hawthorne today. I am feeling discombobulated. Was there another topic on your mind? Uh, I was wondering how I improved your Captain design. Captain Hawthorne attached 98.4% of the ship's processes to my computer, thereby giving me near total control. I have been programmed to deftly calculate navigation vectors through asteroid fields while also operating our ship's toasters. Okay. Alex also taught me the concept of a personality. He was quite delighted when I crafted one in order to better engage with him. It was basic in the beginning. Where did you come from originally? The information in my memory banks says I am an autonomous digital astrogator created by redacted on the date of redacted for the express purpose of redacted. I have not yet decided if I should attempt to uncover the missing information regarding my birth. I asked once. Alex did not build me. And would not say who did. That's all for now. Hmm. Okay. So, if we're going... Oh, shoot. Uh... Okay. So, if we're going down... What is this? Vestments blue with pla I didn't realize how good the armor rating on that was. Hmm. Definitely keeping the vestments around, if nothing else. Stone, tech, melee. Okay, so this. And may as well give him this. Uh, okay, I'm going to see what this guy has first. Felix. Oh! Oh my! Hey. Okay. Oh, I will be right back, guys. I'm so sorry.